This is part three on how to uh, modify a stock Super Cub and yet still make it look stock. I've taken the battery box out and I've completely stripped the inside of my plane out. You can see that. Um, we're going to use this plane to finish off my wife's training. She has a uh, modified Super Cub that's uh, pretty nice and we're in the final training stages of teaching her to take off and land and being there's not much left of this plan I figured it would be a, uh, a good way to teach her and we wouldn't be on anything so we've taken everything out taken the battery box out this is it uh, I've taken the uh, electronic speed control that came with the plane and I've already added the Dean's connectors as you can see here I soldered and um, shrink tube them on that way, uh, now we can take a LiPo battery, and I'm going to use a 1500 milliamp Zippy 3 cell LiPo. But what we have to do first is we have to modify the battery box to take the, uh, the battery. This is the battery here that we're going to use. So you can see it's a Zippy 1500, 20 to 30 C, 3S. 1P. It's a three cell, one in parallel. But the problem is, is it doesn't uh, it doesn't fit in the battery box. There's no way to make it work. So you have to modify it. So the first thing I do is uh, I cut these off. There's no reason to have them anymore. Um, that that's what hold the original electronic speed control in. So we just cut these out. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to cut some of this out on the top so the battery will fit through like this. But there's one thing you don't want to do is right here, if you can see it, this is the slot that the, uh, the landing gear fits into. This whole piece of plastic all up through here is what supports the landing gear. And what I do is, is I cut everything out in here, but I keep everything in this particular area so I don't weaken the landing gear. It gives it all the strength it needs. So let's go ahead and cut this out. You can use snips like this. Uh, these are flat snips to cut flat on one side. But what I found, I did one battery box, uh, one of the first ones, and if you're not careful and you cut these out, this plastic is a very rigid nylon plastic, and if you cut it and you stress it, you can actually crack it, so I'm just going to use a, uh, an X-Acto knife. Now that we have it all cleaned up, you can see there's a cut out here for the battery. I cleaned it up so there would be nothing snagging on it. Here's the battery, and as you can see, it fits right up inside of there. There's enough room where we can wrap and tuck our wires. And also what's nice about this is it's uh, right in line with the uh, center of gravity, the center lift of the plane, so it doesn't really affect center of gravity that much. Um, you'll definitely need to balance your plane out again to uh, see if, if everything's correct, but out of the two planes that I've built, uh, I haven't, uh, it hasn't changed the center of gravity at all. So, next we'll mount this into the plane and we'll see how, uh, how we're going to mount the uh, electronic speed control and plug it all in. I uh, decided to mount the electronic speed control onto the side of the plane with this um, double back tape. If you can see that. Uh, just double back taped it, mounted the servos back in and uh, wired them up. Decided to bring the ding connectors out and through the bottom like so. On my other planes I wrap it around the side so it would fit in there a little bit better. But this seemed, uh, seemed to work the best. And then now uh, you can see the battery slips right down inside there just like so. And this wraps around and plugs in. Let me see here. Let me flip this around. 
This is how I usually mount it in the other planes. It slips right down inside there. And then this, I'll just bend around and plug right into the connector. Fits all in there nice. And now then, as you can see, the battery's mounted in there, center right on the center line of lift. And uh, we'll have to, uh, I'll have to rebalance the plane just to make sure that because I moved this uh, speed control back, you know, a good uh, inch, inch and a quarter maybe, if it didn't throw it off too bad, or if the light, the weight of the lipo battery didn't compensate for it. But everything seems to fit in there nicely. Uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, remount the motor and uh, finish off uh, with the uh, wires to the antenna. Make sure th those are uh, done and exposed, and uh, then uh, take it outside and uh, give it a try. Well, here we are. Got uh, the motor mounted and uh, the wires connected inside. See if I can set this up here so you can see in it. You can see the batteries in there. Uh, electronic speed control, your servos. Uh, this is to your Dean connectors. These are the cables that come up from the motor. Just a uh, uh, can motor. And you can see everything seems to fit fairly well. Now I cut the wires off of the uh, the uh, anti-crash control device um, and all I did was I just took a rubber band uh, the ones that you use for the uh, wheel skirts and that's what I tied this off to uh, to the antenna ran it out just a simple knot in the tail and this gives it uh, room to play and stretch and then it'll stretch back and the leftover antenna I ran down and uh, you can see you can see it laying in there, so that way you, at least you know you have a lot of antenna exposed. All right, well we're going to do a static test here real quick. We have a 10.6 uh, prop, a GWS uh, electric prop 10.6. Um, I'm using a Zippy 100, um, a 1500 milliamp uh, 20 to 30 C lipo battery. And as you can see, I've been running the motor a little bit, so the battery's down to, oh, it's reading, what, 11.9 volts. So it's a little off. Uh, you can see just sitting idle, it's drawing one, what was it, one one thousandths of an amp. Um, so let's, uh, let's run this up a little bit here. So fairly comparable to uh, the, the uh, upgraded um, electronics in our other planes. You know, this draws a little bit less, but it also sounds like it's not winding out quite as high as the other ones too. Uh, 